Richard Branson's company Virgin Orbit just filed for bankruptcy. If you haven't followed this story, Richard Branson, famous billionaire from Virgin Records, Virgin Atlantic, so the Virgin brand, that billionaire decided to go into the space rates already many years ago. He has two companies that he's involved in. Number one is Virgin Galactic. They do passenger transport to space. So a person like you and me, if you have the money, 250K, 400K, you can buy a ticket and you can fly to space. This is Virgin Galactic. The other company, which is a space off of Virgin Galactic, this is Virgin Orbit, and they went bankrupt. Virgin Orbit was not doing passenger transport, they were doing cargo transport, because they realized as they were building the passenger transport side, there's a lot of money and a lot of interest from companies to launch, for example, satellites. So they need a provider who can bring the satellites to space. So they spun out the other company, Virgin Orbit, everything was great, but their last launch failed, destroyed quite a bit of cargo, including satellites, and then they realize that's it for the company. They can't afford another launch. The technology or the team or whatever they were doing clearly wasn't working well enough because you can't destroy your customer's cargo. And that was it. Virgin Orbit, bankrupt. Virgin Galactic is still ongoing. So the passenger version is still active. The freight, the cargo version, that is bankrupt. So what is interesting about the case is that both companies use the same launching method. Because remember, Virgin Orbit was a spin-off of Virgin Galactic. So what they do is they have a Boeing 747 plane and they use that to launch the rocket. So if you look at SpaceX and Blue Origin, they try this vertical launching, which seems to be the more efficient way. But Virgin thought we want to do the horizontal launch. You want to have a plane like a good old old school Boeing 747 and we use that to launch. And if this sounds archaic, like an old technology, they use this old plane model and they modify it and they bind a rocket on top and this is what they use. That's because they wanted to go cheap. They wanted to have have the cheap version of let's say launching people into space because they wanted to have mass adoption and then later with Virgin Orbit they wanted to have the cheap service for companies to launch for example satellites into space so they wanted to go cheap the problem is the industry the space industry isn't really an industry where you have a lot of margin for error you don't want to be in the low end low quality rocket you don't want to be in the thing that can kill you if it's a bad day you can get a really cheap plane ticket because plane are obviously a very proven technology. The market is completely scaled. You can get some really good prices on certain airlines, but that doesn't mean that once we start going into space that you can start up with a really cheap technology and try to cut corners. What is actually funny is that this is very much aligned with his approach because I actually find Richard Branson super likable. Clearly he's very successful. It just seems that this wasn't exactly his thing because a long time ago I read his biography and he tells the story of how he created his airline. So he has an airline called Virgin Atlantic. Atlantic. And what happened was he was stuck on some island or somewhere and he wanted to charter a flight, but there was no flight to charter. So he couldn't get from island to island. So what he did is he rented his own airplane and then sold tickets by hand to the people who also wanted to make this trip. And this was the birth of Virgin Atlantic. So I'm paraphrasing, but this was roughly the story. So he's an adventurer. He's a go-getter. He has something that he has to address and he just does it. This is him. So for him to create a space technology that it's literally stuck on a Boeing 747 makes so much sense because he's a tinkerer. He just puts things together. He has an idea. He wants to try it out. He sees if it works. And obviously he knew that if you can make it cheaper, it's going to be amazing. But clearly this approach is very dangerous in the space industry. So reason number two of what happened, if you look at SpaceX and Blue Origin, SpaceX, Elon Musk and Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, these are very obvious direct competitors. They themselves and obviously the other companies, they are tech companies. Richard Branson is very clearly a very skilled businessman, very good at executing businesses. He started so many businesses. Just check out the Virgin Group, how many companies are under this logo. It's crazy how much he has created. So he clearly is very skilled, but Richard Branson isn't really a tech guy. He's more of a marketing and business guy, especially marketing because he became famous because of all the stunts he did. And he was also one of the people who went to space with his own space airline. And in the last few decades, he has done a lot of different things, but not a tech guy. And a little side note, because of a different project, I was looking at Hyperloop. So Hyperloop is this concept of the vacuum train. I believe Elon Musk was the one who came up with it, which is kind of ironic. But the concept is that you have a vacuum tube. So basically a tube where you suck all the air out. Without the air in this tube, there's very little wind resistance. So you can have a train go really, really fast in this tube because there's no wind to really give it resistance. So this is the idea. Elon Musk, I believe, called it the Hyperloop. There's companies that are trying to do that 
problem is it's quite expensive. I've seen some numbers that it costs like 350 or something million dollars per kilometer just to set up the track. So it is quite expensive. And as far as I know, there isn't really a good commercial train even existing. So this is all kind of in the prototype phase. Richard Branson was also interested in one of his Hyperloop companies. So he got involved with one. They were called Hyperloop One. And then they changed their name to Virgin Hyperloop. So this was then one of the companies under the Virgin brand. And they were focusing on passenger transport. And Richard Branson loved that because he's totally into reaching the direct consumer, working with the direct consumers, which fits to his other businesses. He was doing the airline. He was doing music. He was always interacting with people, which is obviously one of the reasons why he has become so liked. But this Hyperloop company realized that this model doesn't work. For whatever reason, there isn't a demand for that. It's too expensive. So they moved to the freight sector, to the cargo sector. And as soon as Richard Branson and Virgin realized that, they dropped out. Now the company was named Virgin Hyperloop for like three years. And now it's back to its old name, Hyperloop One, because they dropped out. They said, yeah, we like the passenger part. We don't like the cargo part. Ironically, Virgin Galactic had the same realization that there is a huge market in space cargo transport they created virgin orbit themselves so kind of did the same move as this other company but then that model went bankrupt and honestly i wouldn't be surprised if virgin galactic is going to be bankrupt in a year because in the grand scheme of things they don't have that much money left and all of these launches they have to do cost a lot and they also have a good amount of liabilities if they with the same tech as virgin orbit now also fail or even if they don't fail if they don't have the demand i wouldn't be surprised if virgin galactic is going to go bankrupt too. All right, back to Virgin Orbit. This is the company that just went bankrupt. They went public via SPAC. And you probably know what a SPAC is. A SPAC just means instead of taking your company public, meaning it's listed on the stock market, which is a painful, lengthy, expensive process, takes a lot of time, a lot of documentation. You grab a company that is already public, that is already going through that process, and you just merge with it. And once you do that, you're magically public without having to have to go through that because you just married another company it is already public. So this is the spec thing. Virgin Galactic went public with a spec. Virgin Orbit went public with a spec. And one of the reasons you could see right from the start that Virgin Orbit is not going to make it, they tried to raise over 400 million with a spec. So when they went public, they want to raise that amount of money, but they only managed to raise half of what they needed. The problem is that money that they needed, this was budgeted. So they needed that money to have enough money for the launch so they can make it. And now they didn't make it and they don't have enough money for the next launch. So they only raised half the money they needed. No wonder they failed. They couldn't afford all the launches. Since it's always fun to do a postmodern, let's look at some of the interviews given by Richard Branson about his companies, Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit. We had a very good experience uh, with Virgin Galactic with a SPAC. Um, you know, we were, we were approached. We hadn't even heard of SPACs at the time we were approached. Um, uh, and um, and uh, so, you know since we've been, since we've been public, we've raised money for the company. We've um, taken some money out to help the other uh, the other Virgin companies, um, and investors have done very well. We've we've managed to raise we we, we will raise money for the company, and 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 I think it's a you know, a very, a, ver a very positive step for Virgin Orbit. A SPAC is easy money. Why do you go public with a SPAC? There's only one reason. You want to have the money faster with less effort. Every interview I ask this is honestly so dumb because the answer is so clear, right? Why did you go public via SPAC? Why didn't you go public the normal way? Uh, we wanted to have money faster with less effort. This is the one answer. Some CEOs say, oh my God, a SPAC, it's like the new modern thing. We find it amazing, find it super interesting. We this great offer. No, it is money that is faster with less effort. That is a spec. The thing with the SPACs is they went down big time. So this interview is from August 2021. When you see a SPAC, a SPAC deal closing, you see the stock price going up and then it always crashes down. So investors did very well. Short-term investors did very well. Long-term investors lost almost all their money. What is funny about the SPAC is Chamath, whatever his last name is, he was the one who approached them. He went to them and he flipped his money. I believe he put down 100 million and he took out over 300 million. He actually also got sued in 2022 when he left the bar because he dumped all his shares and left but that's a different story you know we're we have a pipeline that is currently at about four billion uh that spans uh, through about 24 or into 25 
So there's an enormous market that is growing in the small satellite market. We've got 300 million uh, in active contracts and LSAs, MOUs and letters of intent. Um, so with that, we're seeing huge momentum. I mean, remember that we just launched uh, successfully in January, launched again in June uh, and put up our first 17 satellites. So we've got huge momentum coming off of those events. Our business development team is not getting any sleep at all. We've signed quite a few deals, which you've seen kind of come out in the public over the last few months. So we're quite optimistic. Yeah, that's not a surprise at all, because Virgin Galactic has these extremely expensive tickets for passengers. For a single individual, it's obviously super expensive. If you're like a multimillionaire or billionaire, you can afford it, but you're not going to spend all of the 250K you have, and then this is gone. So this is one thing, but Virgin Orbit with the cargo transport, and he is the CEO of Virgin Orbit, the company that now went bankrupt. Of course, if you create a technology that seems to work well, well, that is cheaper than everything else, you're going to have a lot of demand. They're going to be very, very interested. Why wouldn't they? Let's say you have a ferry and you have the cheapest ferry around. You say, hey, I'm going to have the cheapest ferry. It's going to be ready to launch, let's say in one year, and you're going to be half the price or whatever from all the other ferries. Everybody's going to want to work with you and say, hey, we want to have this one. This one is cheaper. We are business. We have a bottom line, shareholder value. We want to take the cheapest one. If it's reliable enough, we're good. So at this stage, there's absolutely no point in bragging about this. What is the point is, does the tech work? Because if the tech doesn't work, all the demand in the world is not going to help you. They raised half the money that they needed, needed over 400 million, raised about 200 million. So they couldn't do as many launches as they wanted to. And clearly it wasn't consistent enough because they had a successful launch, but then in 2023, they still had a failure. Um, well, first of all, forgive, we got a lot of customers who've had um, all their satellites put into the right positions in orbit today is celebrating in the background so uh, if you hear a cheer or two uh, just excuse us and um, yeah i mean we've it's been an incredible couple of months with uh, virgin galactic doing an absolutely seamless uh, flight uh, in into space um, and uh, and virgin orbit today going into orbit traveling at seventy and a half thousand miles an hour and just dropping dropping off and uh, seven satellites successfully into the right positions around ar around the Earth. And and this is their second their second flight in a few months. Yeah, this is actually a very interesting comparison because Elon Musk, I believe, he talked about this that SpaceX in the early days they had the same issue because this technology is so expensive that a single launch costs a lot of money, and they have to like budget. Okay, we have this launch, this one is one validation, then we have this launch, and this is all the money we have. And they had the last launch. If this launch had failed, this was like the Elon Musk uh, SpaceX story. If this launch would have failed, they would have been bankrupt but luckily it succeeded. But of course, it's always a combination of luck and skill. So it's never just one of them. So I think Elon Musk is very well known of being extremely hands-on and being in the weeds. While I don't see Richard Branson the same way, I see him as a very skilled financial person, market person, commercial person, but the company failed not because of the commercial part, although you could say the SPAC was maybe like a bit of an odd move, but they got 200 million, so it's not that bad. But it failed for technical reasons. It failed because there are some things that were said about these planes or let's say these launches were very susceptible to human error because the technology didn't have the same software safeguards that for example SpaceX and similar technologies it was a little bit archaic a little more simple and they needed very skilled pilots and the one pilot that died I believe in 2014 died because I think it was like an obvious mistake where he pulled the brakes while they were fully accelerating and then the whole thing blew up so it's one of these things less safeguard and there was also with the safeguards from the people who were supposed to check things there was one lengthy report looking at the crash and they found out that a lot of the checks that should have been done carefully weren't really done there was like a checklist and they just checked everything without properly checking them so there was a lot of stuff like that and it's kind of sad because Richard Branson is very excited about what this tech can do but he doesn't seem very excited about the tech itself and he doesn't seem very hands-on when it comes to making sure that when your whole business depends on these very few launches that are extremely expensive that you are in the weeds and taking care of them and trying to manage everything and trying to help people and trying to make sure that on the big day no errors are going to occur because the stakes are really high this is not a car if it breaks down it's just standing there this is a spacecraft if an error happens you're guaranteed 
to lose all your money. There is no margin for error. Just, just, a, just a fun one, because the, 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 the plane that, um, that we converted to do this mission is, it was, it was one of the 747s that worked for um, Virgin Atlantic for many, many, many years. Uh, and the time that we actually they actually launched the, the rocket just happened to be at uh, 747 this morning. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not one for these sorts of things. But 747 and yeah, they nailed it. <laughs> they weren't. They didn't realize that's what happened. Yeah, that's him. He's like an adventurer. He's like a romantic. He used one of his first 747s for the launch. Why would you do that? You want to make sure you have the best tech. But he likes public stunts. He likes things that sound good, that look good, that make for good stories, that are fun to do. If you read his biography, there's a lot of moments where he thinks, should I do something? And then he asks himself, is it going to be fun? And if he answers yes, he does it. Why did he go to the aviation industry, to the music industry? Because it seemed fun to him. This was a fun thing to do. And why did he drop out of Virgin Hyperloop when they went to cargo transport? Because it was less fun to him. He wanted the passenger transport. Same with Virgin Galactic. Dropping a, a week ago, dropping a, a giant rocket from a 747 into orbit with, uh, with Virgin Orbit, our sister company. And then a week or so later, uh, you know, being propelled into space from uh, a mothership that we built. Yeah, so I, 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 I'm going to wake up tomorrow and think, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I Maybe by tomorrow I'll come down. <laughs> I, I can't help but notice your, your glittering, shining astronaut wings right now. <laughs> now that you have them, what's next? Well, you, I'm sorry, I'm not letting go of that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's next? Um, you can see he's very childlike. He's very charming. He has a very natural charm. He seems very down to earth. He doesn't talk down to people he's always interacting in a good way and you can see a lot of old interviews with him he was always like this and it's actually kind of cool that you have a billionaire who's really old but who still has this childlike persona so i think he himself as a person for sure is an inspiring person i think you can't deny that based on everything he's accomplished and he probably really cares about these companies but also he is going to be fine no matter what he's not going to file for personal bankruptcy he has a lot of money he has a lot of other businesses he's still a billionaire even if these companies fail it's not so important but a lot of the success he had in the past was accomplished through marketing through media sense he also recounts the story of the media sense that didn't work he always talked about crazy things where they try to get into people's heads where they try to inspire people like when he created virgin atlantic his airline it was just a different look a different feel they were talking in a different way it was like oh my god this is different and he always wanted to be that virgin galactic wanted to launch passengers for a while now but they haven't they keep postponing i think now they say 2026 for a while it was like 2022 2023 but now it's 2026 so they keep pushing the date back i think they're dying as well i think they had a wrong focus i think they had a focus on brand public stance publicity diversity but they didn't have enough of a focus on innovating and improving and creating safeguards for the technology thanks for watching